Let's revisit the idea of the clip. In Ableton Live, the clip is really the heart and soul of the program because the clips contain all of the content, whether it's audio loops, uh, one-shot samples, MIDI notes, everything is placed inside of a clip. And when you combine all these clips together, that's when beautiful music starts to happen. So let's look at the anatomy of a clip. I'm gonna bring in another audio loop and I'm gonna place this onto this audio track inside of a blank clip slot and we will end up with an audio clip. So I'm gonna drag and drop this loop from my browser and I will place it right here. And when I place it here, we can see at the bottom, I'm looking at the clip view. So again, quick reminder, if I wanna see the clip view, two ways I can do it, I can either double click on the clip itself or I can click on this little tab right here that shows me an overview of the clip. If I wanna look, uh, look at the device view, which would be any effects that I place on this track, I can double click on the track header or I can click on this tab down here that has the track name, that's my device view. So right now we're concerned with the clip view. So let's play the clip. And if we look down here at the bottom, I can actually expand uh, the clip view by hovering my mouse right above it. My icon changes, I can click, hold, drag up, and I can make my clip view a little bit bigger. Right now the info view is taking up a little bit of space down here, so I'm gonna hide the info view so my clip view takes up more of the screen. There we go. Now we can see the clip here and we also have some clip properties on the left side of this clip that we're gonna discuss right now. Now this is an audio clip, so there's gonna be certain things that are different about an audio clip and a MIDI clip. And again, we'll explore those pretty quickly, but let's focus on what we have in front of us. My audio clip, the name of it is right here. I can see that this audio clip was originally uh, recorded at 44,100 samples per second, 44.1 kilohertz. Again, that's CD quality audio. 16-bit, that's also CD quality audio, and it says two channels, so it's a left and a right channel. It's not a mono file. Below that, I have the volume for my clip right here, and this affects just this one clip. So if I play it again, and I turn the volume down, you can visually see the waveform getting smaller. With any parameter to that, that I adjust, the volume is one of many parameters. With any parameter that I adjust, if I wanna reset it to its default, I can sim simply select that parameter and press delete. All right, so now it goes back to zero dB. Now I also have the ability to transpose this. When we're transposing, we're changing the pitch. And with a drum loop, changing the pitch might seem kind of odd, but you can do some very cool stuff with it because this clip is also warped. It's being time stretched, which means that it's gonna play in time with the tempo of my set no matter how much I transpose or change the pitch. Let's turn the metronome back on. And here's transpose. Now right now this warp button is on, which means that my clip is warped, it's being time stretched. So if I transpose this, I'll increase the pitch, I'll make it a higher pitch. So I've increased this by two octaves, 24 ST, ST stands for semitones. So I've increased the pitch by 24 semitones, but it's still playing at the same tempo. Let's transpose this the other way. Okay, now we've gone down by what, 19 semitones? But again, it's still playing in sync with our tempo. And the whole reason for that is because this clip is warped. Now we're gonna to touch on warping a little bit later. Warping is another thing that confuses a lot of newcomers to Ableton Live. It's really not that difficult a concept to grasp, but we should lay down a bit more groundwork before we dive into that. Just know that if you import certain uh, samples that are, um, that are already loops, that are already cut up to be a specific length, say four bars or eight bars, uh, when you bring those samples in, depending on how your preferences are set up, Ableton Live will automatically warp and loop those clips. In fact, let's go ahead and check out the relevant section of the preferences so you can understand why this audio clip is already looped and warped. If we go down to the area that says record warp launch, in here, there's an area that says warp slash fades. Now, when you import certain samples of a certain length, uh, how they're going to be handled by Ableton Live is dictated by this series of preferences. So here it says loop slash warp short samples. So if I uh, bring in a short sample, something that's shorter than you know a full-on song, something that Ableton Live thinks might be a loop, uh, 
I have an option to tell Live what to do when I bring that in. So when I bring in a short sample, it's gonna automatically warp it and loop it. That's the option I selected. Now, if you click on this uh, chooser box here, you can make it so that when you bring in these short samples, they'll be unwarped and just a one-shot sample, meaning that you play it once and it won't loop. And unwarped means that it won't be time stretched. It won't automatically play in sync with your set. So I like using warped loop because typically the short samples I bring in are meant to be loops uh, and typically live guesses the right tempo. Below that we have auto warp long samples. Now I believe that by default this preference is on. I typically turn this off because when you're bringing in longer samples, this is really meant for like full on songs. Uh, live has problem guessing the proper tempo uh, when it's analyzing things that are a lot longer and where there's a lot of musical content. So I like to have this off. I like to warp long songs on my own and I'll show you uh, some tried and true techniques when we get to that point. The default warp mode. Now there's various ways that Ableton Live can time stretch your audio. These warp modes are essentially time stretching algorithms and we'll dive into more detail with that later. Uh, from my experience, I find that the beats warp mode is the best default warp mode. That just means when you bring stuff in and you first turn on warp, it's gonna warp it in this beats warp mode. Uh, the main thing to know about this is that it's gonna help preserve the timing of the audio above all else. Again, we'll dive deeper into it later, but just take that away from this right now. And then create fades on clip edges. Ultimately, this is to make sure that when your clips loop, they don't pop, okay? So with my preferences set up this way, when I import a short sample, it automatically warps it so it's time stretched and it automatically loops it. Now, if I turn warp off, you're gonna notice that the background behind this clip is gonna change. Now I don't see any lines. There were numbers up here and the numbers were telling me the bars and beats. Uh, and instead of seeing that, I see a timeline down here. This is telling me how many seconds have elapsed as the clip plays. My metronome is still on. I haven't changed my master tempo. Let's hear what happens if I play this beat and it's not warped. Okay, well we could hear that it didn't stay on beat and when the clip finished, it didn't loop. If I wanna loop this, I can't turn loop back on. There's my loop button, loop is grayed out. The reason why is because we can't loop a clip unless warp is enabled. So I have to turn warp back on. Once I turn warp back on, now I can see my little beat grid back here. These numbers represent the bar. If it's two numbers, 1.2, that's the first bar, the second beat. If I hover my mouse a little higher where these numbers are. It turns into a magnifying glass. Now I can click and hold, and if I drag down, I can zoom in. If I drag up, I can zoom out. And if I move left and right, I can zoom to the left or to the right. And as you zoom in further, you start to see more numbers. So now, if there's three numbers, the first one is the bar, the second one is the beats, the third one is what 16th note of that particular beat are you at? So, let me zoom back out here. So having warp on uh, allows you to basically stretch your audio against a beat grid. We'll get to that later. The whole point is that when I'm importing these shorter samples, they're automatically warped, uh, live detects the tempo, and then I can play these in sync with other loops. Down here, I can choose the warp mode for the individual sample. And again, the default is beat, so we're gonna leave that there. Now, one thing that's really interesting about the way the clips work, I mentioned that you can only have one clip play at a time per track. Let's go ahead and hide our inputs and outputs here. I wanna see more clip slots. Let's take this same clip and we're gonna duplicate this clip so that it's in the second clip slot on this same track. If I wanna duplicate, the shortcut is Command D. We can also find that function in the edit menu. There's duplicate right there. Now if I play a clip, when I play the next clip, it's gonna to wait to the beginning of the next bar to start this clip. I trigger it now, it waits. The reason for that is because next to our metronome, we have this thing here that says one bar. This is called the clip launch quantization. Now we talked about launching a clip, it's just Ableton speak for playing it. We're talking about quantization, we're talking about the timing of events that are happening. So the clip launch quantization determines how often you can launch a clip. And when you launch a clip, when is it gonna actually start playing? With this set to one bar, the next clip is not gonna start until the beginning of the next bar. So if your clips are properly uh, edited and looped, you can basically jump from one clip to the other without ever seeming like you're going off beat. Now we duplicated this clip because I wanna point out a fact that each clip is its own individual entity. 
and each clip can have its own individual settings. So for example, this clip, the first one, if I play this, that's playing at the default volume and it's playing at its default pitch. While this, oh, and I didn't turn loop on. Let's turn the loop back on, that'd be helpful. And get you back on. I'm gonna make sure the second clip is gonna loop too. So now I've selected the second clip. I'll turn loop on for that, but I'm gonna transpose this clip. I'm gonna transpose this back up uh, by two octaves. So I've selected the transpose knob, and instead of turning it, I'm just gonna simply type in 24, hit return. So now we're going up two octaves. I'm gonna launch the next clip when I'm ready, and you'll hear that when I play this one, the previous clip on this track will stop. And now I'm playing the duplicate, but I've changed some of the settings here. I changed the pitch. When I'm ready, I'll go back to the first clip. And there we go. So a few more clip properties we'll look at really quickly with this audio clip. I mentioned that this clip is looping and we can see the loop button right here. But below that, we have the loop position. So where does the loop start at? And again, we have those same three numbers. So the loop is gonna start at the first bar, the first beat, the first 16th note of that beat. So basically at the beginning of the clip. The loop length, how long is the loop going to be? Right now it says four bars, zero beats, zero 16th notes. Now if you want your clips to loop for a solid number of bars, you wanna make sure that these last two numbers are zero. Otherwise it's not gonna be an exact number of bars. Now maybe I wanna make it so that this clip doesn't loop for a full four bars. I could change this a couple different ways. If I go down here where it says length, if I click in this first box, I can either type a number or I can use my up and down arrow keys to change the amount of the loop. Maybe I only wanna loop the last bar where that little fill happens, okay? Where it says position, again, the first box is the bar. I could click in there and this time I'll type the number four. So now I'm just looping that. And if you notice, when I'm changing the loop section, this bracket here is moving. This is the loop brace. So if I wanted to, I could simply click in the middle of the loop brace. If I wanna keep a one bar loop, I'll just move the position of this one bar loop. If I wanna make the loop longer, I can extend the beginning and the end of the loop brace. And if I wanna change where the playback's gonna start, we have this arrow here, and this determines where the clip will start at. And if I want, I don't have to start this from inside of the loop. I can make this start here. So that's this one clip. And again, all these properties are separate from the second clip. So let's take it a step further. Something else that's unique that we can do with audio. I'm gonna duplicate this clip one more time, Command D. On this third clip, what we'll do is we'll reverse the audio. If we go down here to the left of the warp button, we have REV, this stands for reverse. So if I click on this, now the audio for just this clip has been reversed. Now it's still transposed up really high. I'm gonna bring this back to the default setting, which was zero semitones. So now if I play the first clip, at any point I can go to my second one, then go to my reversed one. It's kind of a sloppy clip there, but it's all right. <laughs> okay, one more thing and then we'll move on. I'm gonna duplicate this clip one last time. Command D. I'm gonna reverse this again so that it plays forward. So I hit reverse again and now the clip is gonna play forward. But what I'd like to do is make it so that this clip uh, maybe plays at half the speed. Underneath the warp button, this is telling us what Ableton Live thinks is the original tempo of this clip, and it says 134 BPM. Now keep in mind, this tempo is not the same as the master tempo here. The master tempo is basically what is the playback speed of our entire project. Everything that's in our project is going to adhere to this tempo. In order for Ableton Live to make different audio sources play at the project tempo, 
Ableton Live needs to know what the original tempo of that audio file is so it can speed it up or slow it down accordingly. So the original tempo of this file is 134 BPM. And if we're gonna play it at our project tempo of 126, Ableton Live is gonna to have to basically slow this down. Now, beneath that, we have two buttons here. This is divide by two, this is multiply by two, and this affects the tempo of this particular clip. Now, if I multiply the tempo by two, now Ableton Live thinks the original tempo of this clip is 268 BPM. So if it's gonna take this clip that would originally play at 268 BPM and slow it down so that it plays at 126, it's gonna play significantly slower than the other clips that are playing at uh, 134, or that were originally 134 BPM. So a quick example, I'm gonna jump from this first clip, which is gonna play at normal speed, to this clip, which is gonna play at half the speed. Okay, so we've seen that we're able to uh, take these clips, we can copy these clips, each clip has its own individual clip properties. We're able to uh, have the clips adhere to our project tempo uh, because they're warped. We can multiply and divide the tempo by two. We can reverse the clips, transpose and change the volume as well as loop them uh, however we want. So. That's a brief insight into clips, specifically audio clips. There's gonna be some unique things that we'll see with MIDI clips, which we'll explore very, very soon.